Hello guys, I am back from the dead and I have another tutorial video for you guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make a GUI. Today's episode is going to be focusing on just the basics and then in a future episode we will go over what I believe is the proper way to structure them because GUIs can get very messy very quickly if you don't have a system in place. Now I'm going to show you guys how I manage all my GUIs and keep everything all organized. But before we do that we need to first know how to open up an inventory. So whenever you open up an inventory in Bucket all you have to do is reference the bucket class and then you can use this handy method inside of the bucket class it is named create inventory and then the first parameter that goes inside of this method is going to be the inventory holder this was used very commonly in previous versions of buckets but it's now pretty depreciated nine times out of ten you will be typing null inside of this first spot right here and then if you only input two parameters then that is going to make a chest inventory if you input three the second one that you're going to do here as you can see right here oh it went away uh, was the inventory type and I think yeah, there's the hotkey. It's control P if you ever want to see what the parameters are that go inside of the parentheses. But as you can see, you can input an inventory type, a title, and all that. We are just going to stick with two simple things for right now. It is an owner and the size of the inventory. Now, whenever you are talking about chests, each row has nine slots in them. So that means the total number of slots inside of the inventory has to be a factor of nine. And I believe the max factor that you can use is, I wanna say 54. Not 100% sure on that, so do not quote me. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to use number 27 because that is indeed a factor of nine. And then I am going to end the statement right there. And that is how you create an inventory and we are done here for today. I am just kidding, we're not even close to done yet. So let me go ahead here and zoom in on the on the goods for you guys alright alright so now you must be asking yourself well how do I actually view this inventory to see what is going on to do that what you need to do is reference the player or whatever entity is going to be opening your inventory so in this case as I just said we are going to be using a player so I'm gonna go ahead here and get that from the event we're using then after this we can go ahead and use this player to open up the inventory. The player class has a method for opening up inventories so we're going to go ahead and use that. But in order to use that method we have to have an inventory object to pass into it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is assign this inventory we just created to a variable. I recommend being pretty specific with your variable names but just for this scenario we don't need to be specific at all because we're only working with one inventory so I just gave it a pretty generic name. Alright so now that we have this inventory variable for, that we can use I'm going to go ahead and pass it into the method open inventory from the player object. Just like that we now have our inventory open. I'm going to go ahead and send the player a message letting them know that they opened up the inventory. And to make sure we are writing proper efficient code, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable for our player as well. If you wanted to have multiple players opening up the same inventory, what you would do is pass in this exact inventory that we made here to all the other players and then we'll open up the identical inventory for all of them. So if one player modifies the inventory, all the players will be able to see it. Let's say you want to copy an inventory but you don't want to give the same one to each player but you want them to have their own unique identical inventory to the one you made originally. What you would do is go through this, you would make another inventory object using this method except instead of putting in null in 27 you would get the size of the inventory that you're copying and then pass that into right here and you would copy all the items from this inventory into the new inventory using a copy constructor of an item stack so that the items are all their own unique stacks. For this example, we're gonna keep it simple though, and we are only going to be using one instance of the inventory at a time. We're gonna be creating a new one every time a player joins, so they will for sure have their own instance of this inventory. So now we want to add items to our inventory. You typically want to do this before you open up the inventory to the player and after the inventory is created. So we can do that right in here. Creating item stacks can be a little bit tedious, so that is why I suggest you set up some sort of system for helping you make inventories, which we will go into in a future episode. 
but for right now let's hard code an item in. So I'm going to go ahead here and create an item stack variable that is going to be our item. And the item I am going to choose is a diamond. In order to pick the type of item you want your item stack to be, what you pass in right here is the type of item you want. To determine what you type in here, what you do is reference the enumeration class called material. And then after that you can see all of the constants that represent all of the items inside of the game. And if I go ahead here and type diamond it will come up and I can go ahead and select that one. Let's say you wanted to give them more than one diamond. What I would do here is input a second parameter and I could set this to 64 diamonds let's say. And it will set the amount in the stack to 64. But I'm going to leave that blank because I only want one item. So now that we have our item, we probably want to do a few things to it, right? Like give it a name, maybe make it look enchanted, things like that. You can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with items. The next thing we want to do is access the item meta, and we are going to be creating a variable to represent this. Now that we have the item meta for our item, we have access to a whole bunch of different values. The main one I'm wanting to change here today is the display name. So I'm going to go ahead and set the display name of our item. In order to do this, we access the item meta and use a method called set display name. And then inside of this method, you pass in the string which you want to be the name of the item. I'm going to go ahead and color this red and just name it diamonds. After we have modified a value inside of the items meta, what we need to do is update the meta of this original item variable we have right here. So in order to do this, after we set our display name and any other values we want to set, then we can go ahead and access our item variable that we created up here. And then we can use the method set item meta and then pass in the meta variable we made earlier. And just like that, our item now has the name diamonds in the color red. The final thing we need to do here is set the item inside of the inventory. So we need to pick what slot we want it to be in because that's how we decide where inside the inventory it is going to be placed. When you're trying to figure out which slot is which, the very first slot in the very first row is 0, and then the very last slot in the very first row is going to be 8. So you have 9 slots in total going from 0 to 8. And then the second row it starts with 9, the third row it starts with 18, etc. And then the middle value is going to be whatever the first value was, plus 4. First row middle column, that would be 4. Second row middle column, that would be 13, etc. So in order to set the item into the inventory, we're going to access the inventory variable we just created and use the method set item. And the first thing we're going to pass in here is that inventory slot. Since I want my item to be in the very center of the entire inventory, I have to figure out what slot that is. So since my, since my inventory has three rows, I want it to be inside of the second row. And since I want it to be in the middle of that row, I need to add 4 to whatever the first value is in that row. And I know that the first value in the second row is going to be 18, or my bad, that's the third row. The second row is 9, and then the middle value is going to be 13, so I can go ahead and pass in 13 right here, and that's going to set it in the very center of my inventory. And then the second thing we're going to pass in here is our item stack variable. And just like that, you have created an inventory with an item in it. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So as you can see, I just joined the game and nothing happened. You know what I didn't do? Register my listener I made. Oh my gosh. You didn't, nobody saw that. See, even experienced developers make simple mistakes. It happens. Everybody makes them. I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't. Probably won't even edit this part out. Let me go ahead and reload the server. And I accidentally moved that. Alright, great. Anyways, now it should work whenever I join the game here. So if I go ahead and reconnect. I didn't build the project after I fixed it. Ooh, it's that kind of day, huh? It's that kind of day. All right, third time's the charm. Let's go ahead and join the game. And as you can see, I have an inventory up on my screen with a diamond in it. And do you want to guess what the name of this diamond is? Diamonds, bunch of, with a bunch of exclamation points after it.
But you can see here, there's one major flaw with my GUI. When I click on this item, I can pick it up. I could even steal it if I wanted to. Now I have a free diamond. You don't want that, right? So I'm going to show you how you could set it up so that this doesn't happen. But there is most definitely a much better way which we will cover in a future video. Let me show you the way that most videos that you will look up on YouTube will show you how to do. And while this does work, it is definitely not a fun time and does not scale well. Trust me, you do not want to be using this with a thousand different GUI pages. Alright, so in order to detect whenever a player clicks on an item inside of your GUI, you need to check to see whenever a player clicks in inside of an inventory and you need to check to see if that inventory is your GUI. There's many different ways you can go about doing something like this but in my mind the simplest way that you would end up doing this and how I've actually done this in the past is by comparing the name of the inventory. So what you would need to do for this is modify what we did up here and set the name of the inventory. So I believe it will be the second parameter is the name of the inventory, right? No, the third parameter is going to be the name of the inventory, my bad. So inside of here, I'm just going to name this page one. And that's going to be the name of my inventory. This is what's going to show up at the top of the inventory where the name, I think, chest would be otherwise. So now that we have this title on our inventory, we can use it to compare to any inventory that the player clicks on, right? So we need to create a new listener to listen for whenever a player clicks on a slot inside of an inventory. Alright, so inside of this inventory click event, there are two types of items you can get. You can use event.get click, or not get click, sorry, get Okay, so there's current item and cursor. What current item does is it gets the item inside of the inventory in the slot the player is clicking on. What get cursor does is get whatever item the player currently has selected on their cursor. So let's say the player has an inventory and I'll go back to the diamond for this example here. So let's say I have an inventory and this is my GUI and right in the middle it has a diamond in it, right? If I were to use the method get cursor, whenever I click on this diamond to pick it up, it will return null because there is nothing in my cursor at this moment. If I were to select the diamond and then place it down somewhere, whenever I place it down somewhere, the cursor will now return this diamond and the get clicked item method will return null because there is nothing in this slot. So the first thing we want to do inside of this method here is check to see if the name of the inventory is equal to whatever the name of our GUI was. And we set that to be page one right up here. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can see what's going on here. All right, that looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and start with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the method get inventory. And this will return this inventory the same exact object that we had up here. It's the same instance of the same object. And then we are going to check the name using a method get title. So we can go ahead and get the title just like this. My bad, I did this wrong. What you need to do instead of getting the inventory is get the inventory view because the inventory itself does not contain a title. It is the inventory view that contains a title. And anytime an inventory is open, it has an inventory view tied to it. And we can use the method get view for getting the inventory view. So now that we have this inventory view, we want to assign it to a variable. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just name it view. So now that we have this inventory view, we can get the title of the inventory, right? So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is make an if statement to compare our two titles. I'm gonna go ahead and just hard code this one in right here. Since we are comparing two strings, we want to use the dot equals operator, not the double equals. And then we want to check to see if the title is equal to page one. And if it is, then we know it's inside of our GUI. And you can see how this can get pretty inefficient pretty quickly because every single time a player clicks on an inventory, whether it's in the GUI or not, 
this method is going to run. And not only that, if you have multiple inventories, the code gets way longer and you have even more checks to do, which is why it can get pretty inefficient pretty quickly as well as pretty messy. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the rest of this method just in case you do need to use it for just making one inventory and you don't want to worry about setting up a whole library or whatever for it. So now that we know that they are clicking inside of our inventory, we could just cancel it right here. Cancel the event and then they would not be able to pick up the item whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the event right here so that is all the work we have to do for right now. You could take this even a step further and set up something so that um, if the player clicks on a specific item inside of your GUI it cancels the event so you can have something like where they can drag and drop an item for their inv from their inventory into the GUI or something like that. You have to get more complicated with it using this method but we're not going to be doing that today. We are keeping it pretty simple so I'm going to cancel this here. So now whenever the player tries to pick up something from our inventory, it will cancel the event. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that right now. Alright, we're in the game and we are inside of our inventory. And you see at the top here, it says page 1, that is the name that we gave our inventory. And we have our diamond with the name diamonds. However, this time when I try to click on it, if I don't die first, it won't let me press on it. You can see every single time I try to click in the inventory, it doesn't let me. And if I try to click on an item inside of my inventory, it does the same thing, does not let me click on it. And then let's say you want to do something whenever a player clicks on this item. What you could do if you have multiple items inside of the inventory is check either the item type, the item name, or any persistent data it has if you're using 1.16 or higher. I'm not going to get into any of that because I think this method of doing it is pretty horrendous. And if you try to make any advanced GUI with this method, you're going to say the same thing I'm pretty sure, unless you have no taste for organization whatsoever. That is all for this episode. Hopefully the next one will not take as long for me to make. If you run into any issues, head on over to my Discord. The link is in the description. There are plenty of like-minded individuals over there who would be willing to help. And that's all for today. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Nice. The mutt's nuts, in fact.